It's not just sitting behind a computer with your hoodie up, typing in code and hacking. It's, it's not just that, it's unpopular opinion. If you're thinking about going into cybersecurity, you need to learn networking first. Look, I understand you get all of these ads bombarding you with learn cybersecurity and earn up to $100,000 a year with no experience. You know the ads that I'm talking about. I got one of those ads too, and it's pretty much why I'm here right now. Uh, when I decided to pivot back into the STEM field, I saw an Indeed ad that says, learn cybersecurity free, or I think it said, start your cybersecurity career now for free or something like that. I clicked the ad and then I checked it out. And I said, oh yeah, let me go ahead and apply. I ended up getting into this school. There, there's just so much, so much to learn, right? But I started with cybersecurity. Didn't understand a thing. Didn't understand sockets, ports, the, the OC. I didn't understand any of that stuff. So what I ended up doing is saying, Okay, well, I need to learn networking first. So let me go back to Network Plus. Started studying for Network Plus and found out that I have no clue what an RJ45, <laughs> I have no clue what an RJ45 jack is. So I said, oh wow, let me go ahead and, and start with A plus instead. Went to A plus and the knowledge was just so vast that I got overwhelmed and said, you know what? Let me go ahead and start with the CompTIA ITF plus. So that's how I started from the bottom. I wanted to start with security plus, but then I realized I know nothing about networking. And if you're starting cybersecurity, you don't either. And you might think you do. You might think you understand what a router is and what a switch is and how they work, but you don't understand the vulnerabilities, which I'm gonna get into later because there are a lot of vulnerabilities built into routers and switches that you have to understand. It has nothing really to do with the popular cybersecurity concepts that's being thrown around on the internet. It has nothing to do with that. It's just, there's just some things that you need to do at a basic level with a switch and a router that'll allow for, I guess, they're called best practices, right? But we'll get into that in a second. So I started from the ITF Plus. And the reason why I started from the ITF Plus is I needed to relearn how to use a freaking computer and understand how computers are moving in this day and age. Because prior to studying for the ITF, prior to coming back to the STEM field, I wasn't really into computers like that. Like I, I took a, a, a you know a, a long hiatus from the STEM field. I started studying other things like psychology, public speaking. I was in a leadership role for quite some time, and I ended up gaining all these other skills, soft skills, which are actually helping me now as I'm transitioning into the IT field. And I was just super rusty, so I needed to learn the basics of how a computer works, and it gave me some insight into why computers are vulnerable in the first place? Well, computers are not necessarily vulnerable. It's how we're using them that makes them vulnerable. Of course, there are some errors in code, some bugs that make the software that we're using vulnerable and open to you know backdoor attacks and things like that. But I think a majority of it is how we use it. Like we shouldn't be going to some dodgy website and clicking on some banner ad. Like who even uses banner ads anymore? I mean, people still use banner ads, but going to a dodgy website and just randomly downloading a file, that's, you shouldn't be doing that. And you should, you should know that, right? So getting the ITF gave me the preliminary foundation of everything in the IT world, right? ITF plus stands for IT fundamentals plus it's CompTIA. And if you are starting out in this IT journey and you're watching this video, go ahead and start with that. Especially if you don't feel comfortable with the behemoth of material that the CompTIA A plus certification requires you to learn before you take those exams. Now, moving on to CompTIA A plus, the A plus further widens and pulls out the content that's in the ITF plus and it drills down into it. So you're gonna be learning some things like for the hardware portion, you're gonna learn what an RJ45 jack is. You're gonna learn what an RJ11 jack is. You're gonna learn what the, what a, I think it's called a RS232, like serial, serial connections, BNC connections. You're gonna learn about all these different connections that you are going to have to be familiar with when you study networking. 
right? And there's a software component to the A plus exam. You're gonna have to learn about Windows, Linux, Mac OS. You're gonna have to learn about um, a little bit about uh, these programming languages, interpreted programming languages, and um, I forgot the other one. I'm not really good with programming, give me a break. So you're gonna have to learn all of these different concepts to get a preliminary understanding of IT in general, because cybersecurity is not just, it's not just sitting behind a computer with your hoodie up, typing in code and hacking. It's, it's not just that, it's so much broader than that. It goes well into the uses of how we are interacting with technology, right? So you're gonna get your ITF plus if you want, you don't necessarily have to. It's not really gonna help you get a job or anything like that, um, but it's good to have or it's good to, to start out with because again, it gives you that nice foundation. You need to get your A plus certification, right? I advise everybody to start out there. And, and it's funny, I just wanna pause real quick. You know, a lot of my friends and family hit me up because they know that I'm going through this process and they say, yeah, I wanna get started in the IT field i think i want to learn to code where did you get that idea from why do you want to code is it because an advertising campaign told you that that's what you need to do now because here's the thing with coding you have to ask yourself why you want to code what are you going to build and why are you going to build it if you have that you just want to work for somebody mentality that's not really going to help because you need to have specific coding skills you have to know how to create certain things with the code in order to apply it to a specific specific role. At least that's what I'm noticing. For example, I'm learning Python only because I need to automate my lab. I need to start pushing some configuration from a control node using Ansible. And I believe I can use some Python scripts to do that, right? Uh, you probably watch my Python videos getting started with Python. And it's very, it's very empowering because once you know how to code something, you can automate, you can set up systems that'll do things for you. You have a specific project that you're building with this programming language and it has a real case use, right? So you gotta ask yourself, why do you wanna code, right? And I get that a lot. There's a lot of people that just wanna jump into this field and then start doing high level stuff like coding. I consider coding to be high level because if you don't have your A plus or if you haven't dabbled in a lot of these IT concepts, how do you know what you want to do? Again, I I'll use myself as an example. I got suckered into the whole cybersecurity stuff with the cybersecurity ad on Indeed, and I ended up staying for the networking, right? I started venturing through the certifications. My mentor said, yeah, uh, you go ahead and do that Cisco instead of uh, Network Plus, because that was my next stop after A+. So I went ahead and I did Cisco, got my CCNA. I'm glad I listened to him because I learned so much, got so comfortable with the command line. I used to be afraid of the command command line. Now I'm very comfortable with any command line that's thrown at me, right? So just to backtrack, right? If you want to get into cybersecurity, you need to start with the basics. You need to start with the fundamentals. You just do. And a lot of people don't believe. If you believe otherwise, comment down below and let me know if there are any entry, entry level cybersecurity roles. Because here's the thing, you can have entry level IT, which is help desk stuff. You can have entry level networking, which is what the CCNA is for. CCNA is entry level networking, not necessarily entry level IT, but entry level networking. And then you you can have entry level cybersecurity, which I'm not really familiar with positions that are entry level cybersecurity. So you can let me know. I don't know everything. This is just one guy's opinion. And that opinion is you need to learn networking first. And here's why you need to know networking first, because if you don't know anything about a network, what it's used for, how it works, how the data flows move from one end to another end, how are you going to harden that network? How are you going to protect that data? There's a lot of things that are embedded within just basic networking that you can miss if you try to jump too far ahead to cybersecurity, which again, I consider to be advanced because I think you have to see certain patterns and iterations of those patterns within a network, what can go wrong, what the network is intended to do, et cetera, et cetera, to kind of have that second nature intuition in cybersecurity, right? So there's a lot of people complaining about the gatekeepers of the cybersecurity industry, but I think to be honest, I think those people know what they're talking about. And we have a we have this um unfortunate habit of throwing labels on people without actually investigating why they think the way that they do. So some of the old heads who are in cybersecurity People are calling them gatekeepers. 
fine, but let's investigate why we're calling them gatekeepers. Are these jobs something that people can learn just by jumping on the computer and just learning this, learning the, the, the system or whatever? If yes, fine, there should be no gatekeeping, right? But if that's not the case, if you're entry level cybersecurity or entry level IT period, and you want to jump straight to cybersecurity and you can't you can't effectively do your job in that role because of a lack of experience then this is where we come back to the conversation of learning the basics and having the experience and going being what they say what they call it test being tested in the fire or something like that right and i think that i think that's a, a, a whole different conversation right um but at the most basic you should be learning networking. Now, what in particular do you need to know about networking since you might not even believe me? So you need to understand about the vulnerabilities. Say, take a switch for instance. You need to learn about the vulnerabilities built into the switch, right? You got MAC address spoofing. You can spoof a MAC address really easily and you need to understand the implications behind that, right? DHCP snooping, right? You need to understand that. You need to understand um, ARP inspection. You don't want any type of ARP attacks on your network, any type of any, again, rogue DHCP servers on your network. And it's really easy to exploit DHCP and ARP. And if you don't know what DHCP is and ARP is, <laughs> How the heck are you, how are you going to, how are you going to harden that network, right? You got to understand these basic stuff. Interface management, right? Are you going to use, would you use VLAN one? What are you going to do with unused interfaces, right? Things like that. How are you going to protect the passwords? On, on these devices, right? These are things that are practically built into the, the very nature of these devices. It's again, similar to how we're using computers. Some people, it would be really irresponsible if, for instance, somebody was creating, let's say cybersecurity content, or if somebody was creating networking content or something like that, and they're a complete newbie. It'd be very irresponsible if that person were to go to Google and type in what's my IP to demonstrate the anatomy of an IP address. Right? What do you think is gonna happen? It's gonna be exposed. And you gotta understand the implications behind that. Of course, you might have some built-in security measures in your router or whatever, your wireless router, whatever it is, that'll prevent attacks, right? By not responding to um, ping requests and stuff like that, even though I think hackers can get around that stuff. Again, I'm not a cybersecurity expert, but you need to at least understand the fact that you shouldn't be giving out your public address. You need to know what a public address is. You need to know what a private address is. As I mentioned before, in the previous video, I don't like to use my home network to show demonstrations. I like to use my Cisco lab, which is connected to a different network, just in case I slip up and show you some IP addresses I'm not supposed to show you, which I mean, it's not big, it's not a big of a deal because I'm, I'm using a lab and I'm using uh, private IP addresses on that lab that's pretty much, pretty much disposable. I can change it anytime I want. My lab is not even on 24 seven. So that's mitigating risks, mitigating risks right there, right? But even then I'm still leaving myself open with certain demonstrations that I do and, and things of that nature, right? Again, comes back to understanding networking and the myriad of built-in vulnerabilities into specific types of networking hardware themselves and the way that we're using them. Same thing with, it, it's also, with the way that we're using our data. Again, the demonstration videos that I do. Certain things I probably shouldn't even be, like I should be very careful of putting up on the screen because again, that's certain data that's being, that's being put out that could be used maliciously, right? So, unpopular opinion, I know. If you have another opinion, you can let me know. But I think that it is what it is, like if you, if you want to get into cybersecurity, I would say get your network plus first. If you're really, really adamant about it, if you want to skip A plus, I don't advise it, but get your network plus first. If you want to go to CCNA or the Cisco route, get your CCNA and then you can, you know, really drill down into security concepts by getting your security plus. Initially, that's what I was going to do. I was going to get the CCNA, then get the security plus, but then I changed my mind. I, I wanna stay on the routing and switching track. I'm gonna learn to automate my network. I'm gonna learn automation period. That's why we're learning Python now. And yeah, that's 
that's my take on that i said what i said if you have any other take on it if anything i said was inaccurate you can just go ahead and let me know yeah but if you like videos like this click right here and i'll talk to you guys next time